sweat, blood, and tears, and frozen fingers. transportation in here and now there's enough snow for sled finally this is the day always waiting for is a musher problem is is that i can't wear a glove on this hand so most things that i do until i actually take off on the sled and put a mitten over it i have to do barehanded and also i have a giant metal plate in my wrist that gets agitated by the cold Five weeks ago, I was up on the coast of western Alaska. I was helping with some storm relief from a devastating typhoon. I was removing plywood and debris from underneath the cabins that were waterlogged when a whole section collapsed on me, trapped me in the mud, and just pretty much crushed the life out of me until I was pulled out from underneath there, basically lifeless. I broke a couple ribs and I broke my wrist in three places. As close to a death experience you could have. Like I gave up and died and somehow came back, you know, thanks to my friends that were able to pull me out of there. We've had a hard fall and we gotta get out there and train hard. It's a hard challenge for me to mush like this, but what better therapy for recovery than to do what you love the most in life? All right, you guys ready? Right. 
after basically giving up that I would ever exist and that I was going to die this horrible, terrible death, all I want to do is live. I'm psyched up to just get out there and get on the trail. I got everything I need to, you know, survive for, you know, the next 24 to 40 hours out there, you know, and whatever I might run into along the way. And to subsistence life, if you can coexist with your environment, it makes life so much simpler. You're real efficient, Willow? Yeah. It's been a while, huh? Yeah. We'll see. Well, today, Timber and Willow, Willow mostly, they've both been asking to go fishing, so see if we can just pull one winter king in. Kings, they got good fat content, especially this time of year when we don't get sunshine. Salmon's our vitamin D. Oh yeah, I'm starting to mark the bait. Timber, are you okay to drive for a minute? Yeah. You drive and I'll throw out the the sneaker pull out the back here. See if we can't get these girls hooked on a king. Cross your fingers. I'm Cole Sturgis. I live in Thorn Bay, Alaska on Prince of Wales Island in Southeast Alaska. My family and I live in our two-story house that floats in the ocean. My oldest is Timber. My middle daughter is Willow. And we have a little two-year-old that's uh, Cedar. And when you're a logger, you tend to name your kids after trees. <laughs> Coming from Montana, I've never been in the ocean, really, until I found a job cutting timber. And it didn't take us long at all to figure out we're heading north. For me, everything in Thorn Bay is unique. The peace, the quiet of it. There's no rat race here. It's a rainforest. Things grow here like I've never seen. It's a magical place. We try to sustain on what the ocean gives us. And this land around here provides us. If we don't stay on top of the food chain, we starve. To be proficient up here, you have to be stubborn. I'm kind of a jack of all trades and a master of none. I don't know much, but I know a lot. <laughs> you know. Nice and easy. There you go. Four under one. Good job. It's a big advantage teaching your children how to drive. I can be man in the pole. Timber knows to take us on course. Hey, one night. We're just waiting now. Good job, girls really makes a person proud that your children are that cool. Yeah, good job. Coming in, let's see if there's a king in here. Yeah, I like that. This is the greatest thing I've been gifted with to raise my girls and help them and teach them. time of the year I'm watching the weather because our lives rely on being able to adapt to what's coming. Oh there's ravens, you hear them? Yeah. Right now they're eating blackfish so if we find where the ravens are eating off the lake, that's where the blackfish are at. <laughs> Yeah, they're about this big. They're real small fish, and they're basically in every lake system out here. The thing right now that's dangerous is we have one of the latest freeze-ups 
almost pretty much in history out here. Look out there, how much water out there. If you go on that, your snow machine can tip over, or you can end up in a ditch, or it might be real deep and you can sink the whole machine and it's easy to lose your life in this kind of stuff. So that's why you gotta be careful. I'm telling that to you too, Sky. Make sure you understand that this is dangerous. But okay, we're gonna go down here. We're gonna poke around a little bit and see what's out there. I'm coming in. Okay. So I'm with my two sons today, Skylar and Keenan, and I want to teach them about blackfish. Blackfish are really important to our culture because when there was times of hunger in the past, this fish was always available. As a Native American, my mom and dad raised 14 kids in the woods and they raised us learning to hunt and survive. It's important I pass it on to my kids like my parents did with me. I see ravens around here, so that's a good sign. But I don't know if it's deep enough to get the fish trap in there. I'm gonna walk out there and just poke around. Can you see that? Uh, no, it's, it might, you might get wet. But this is dangerous condition. Just wait here. There's some kind of dark water right here where the ravens are eating off the lake. That's where the blackfish are at. I'm just gonna go straight to that spot. This might be too hard to even get to. I mean, it just feels like it ain't even frozen. It feels like wet moss. Like right here. Oh yeah, it's deep right here. You don't want to step here, you'll go right in. Yeah, it's thin everywhere around here. That's deep. I don't like this spot because I don't want to end up in the lake. We'll find another creek I know of and we'll try there. This is pretty thought out here all the way up to the edge. I'm hoping I can get a fish trap in here. See that, Keenan? Look. This is like the native style fish trap. If we throw it in facing towards the water that's coming down, any fish swimming down this stream will go into this funnel. It'll get caught in here. When I try to come back out, it'll go over here on the sides and it can't get out. Okay, you guys ready? Okay, one, two, three. We'll wait overnight, and then uh, if there's any fish in there, we'll have ourselves a little meal. Hope for the best. The land, the river, the sky, it's my library. Let's see how the story develops. chase the game away and 
it's going to be that much more difficult. So I really need to get on finding these caribou if I can. Keep my eyes open, the ones here and the ones behind me, because I'm not alone. Never a dull moment. I'd rather live a full 40 years than a half-lived life for 80 years. We've been going for a couple hours now. Whoa, whoa, guys, good. Let's take a little break here, guys. Good. All right, while well, the wind's picking up, I'm gonna take advantage and stop here. And then I'm gonna put everybody's wind coats on. <laughs> This is what I've been waiting for for the last five weeks, hoping that I could get strong enough and figure out a way. And I'm not strong enough, but I know that I can trust my team and I know that I can ride a sled with a blindfold and no arms. Now we're set, tanks are full on energy. We're ready to hit the trail, Neil. All right. This is the moment I live for, you know? The team's strong. We're breaking trail through a foot and a half of snow. I shouldn't be out here driving dogs because most healthy people can't even withstand what it takes to train this team. You know, what it takes to train this team is to live on the trail with them. Day, night, day, night. Run, rest, run, rest. Repeat, repetition of a good thing takes great endurance on my part. The only way I'm going to get stronger is to keep testing myself and keep pushing myself. Oh, what a beautiful day. The clouds are lifting, some lights coming in. The dogs are just charging through it. Oh, there's a moose off in the distance. One of those things you have to be real careful about out here traveling with dogs is, uh, you know, a lot of times the moose get real hungry the deeper the snow gets and they'll straight up attack you sometimes. That one's kind of following me right now. That moose is coming directly on me. Speed up the process a lot with your help. 
chicken lives in here. Well, not no more. We're gonna have to get her a chicken coop built. Maintenance on a float house is sink or swim. If you don't maintenance it, it's gonna sink. The water is, is definitely a, the scariest part. We have these massive tide flushes of water coming in and out. 40, 50, 60 mile an hour sustained winds. The house is back and forth and you're hitting the anchor lines and the house is shaking and I hope it don't tip over <laughs> and sink, you know. We just try to keep up with what the ocean destroys. Ready? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, now I've got to get this roof off of here. Camp 36 is the original name of my float house. There we go, now we're making headway. It is one of the last remaining original logging camp floats, which interests me since I was a logger most of my life. And I'm trying to preserve it as much as possible. It's a piece of history. It is a special thing to me. I don't know any more beautiful of a place to do a middle of the winter greenhouse tear down than right here. I mean, that water's just glass. It's like a mirror. It's an amazing place. I'm gonna take this wall down so I can get to this board right here. There's always something going wrong with these houses. They creak, they pop, they move, things get loose. It's a challenge, but it's a very unique, very cool place to live. All right, that I got access now that I can throw a new rope on, strap these logs tight. Being a strong person in the woods and being a strong father to my children has made me become more humble in my environment. Right there, you see it? Yeah. Are they gonna catch you? I don't know, we'll find out. I don't see nothing. 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 It's like Christmas with no presents. Yeah. <laughs> like a chunk of coal on Christmas. Okay, let's keep moving. We'll try the next spot. I just gotta work at it a little harder today. I like to have some kind of luck when I'm out here with the kids because it adds so much excitement. It helps us to remember this journey. I'm feeling a little discouraged, but one thing we have to do is keep trying. I can go out there with an the ice pick and see how deep it is. Hopefully I don't sink. Base is looking for deep water now. Just chop that area out and see if I can get that fish trap in. Just gotta get all this ice out of the way. Spot. I also don't want to walk around 
too much here because I hate to fall in. This is very thin. Might be very deep too. There's no moss. It's nice and deep. Now I'll just put the trap in here and hope for the best. Usually it's not this hard to catch blackfish. But it's been so warm this year that anywhere that looks like a good spot for blackfish are still like completely thawed out. Uh, okay, I think this is plenty big enough. Basically gonna go straight down right here. I got the fish trap in here, hoping the best. I'm gonna go back to the kids. We're gonna head home and come back tomorrow and check this. I think children should have responsibility to grow them into good young adults. This brown log keeps the main logs from shifting. That's what everything's tied to is this log. You know, a couple of these cables got a lot of slack in it. This problem with metal. As soon as you put it in salt water, it's started its last day. Now, to tie this together, I have this new rope. It's called blue steel. That is the ticket. Well, it's extremely strong. This is very good rope. The salt water does not eat this. So I'm going to try to feed that rope underneath. Loop both sides of this and try to pull straight up and then staple it in. Uh-oh. Oh, oh, oh. And ta-da. Look at that. Maybe I can get it to go under this way. There it is. We're under both logs. Timber. Can you hold this jack straight up and down for me? Okay. Everything this house is built out of came from nature. We utilized it as stewards of the land. Okay, I want you to put that staple right there. It takes a lot to keep one of these together, okay? If you do not do the maintenance required, nature will reclaim everything that was taken. Well, I feel good about this. Should sleep a little better tonight. I think we're golden. You need everything that your arsenal holds to make it through this lifestyle. Wolf, Wolverine, they're most likely following the caribou that I saw. My goal is to live in harmony with my ecosystem, taking what I need when I need it. And I have a lot of food that I need to come up with. I want to see a shape. That's, I think, the same bushes I thought I saw last night. But...
I have to try and pick out a boy. They're getting nervous. <laughs> Nighttime stalking and uh, ambient light caribou. I've got a fox going to make sure he's down. Good luck picking that up. That's not a ptarmigan. Let me get big red and uh, start this process. It was really out of the box on how I went about this whole hunt from stalking him nighttime in a blizzard to uh, being patient and waiting for the better weather to get him. But this couldn't have gone any better. Thank you, buddy. You're a nice looking bull. Look at that thick winter coat already. And I do have a little heart rock for you. Alaska has imprinted itself on me. It has brought out a part of my DNA that was dormant. This year, things are changing so rapidly and so vastly with the ecosystem. If you're not planning for every scenario, I guarantee you one of them's gonna bite you in the ass. The things that I have left to master after being here 23 years is everything but i'm excited to think outside the box the sky is a limit the last few years have been anything but easy but the start of this season couldn't have gone better so from my heart to yours buddy thank you bubba Let's get you home. Am I grateful? Hell yes. Some people put their faith in luck. Some people put their faith in God. Everybody's got to have something they believe in. And uh, I believe in myself. It's incredible to watch a team work its way through adversity. Deep snow conditions, they're just charging through it. It's just a beautiful thing to watch. The kind of conditions that I just love. Making my own trail out in the middle of nowhere. It was a vast, beautiful wilderness. I live 30 miles out off the road system into the wilderness. I am now 40 more miles out into it and have run out of trail where people have actually traveled. I'm the first person to get to see this side this winter and put this trail in myself. And that means the world to me through what I've been through. Ooh. Okay, I've been traveling about 55 miles, it's getting late. I'm gonna set up camp here for the dogs. Couldn't ask for a prettier place to camp. You know, normally a run like that ain't nothing to me, but I'm pretty exhausted right now. It feels really good to have gotten out here and made it out this far and feel like, you know, when I make it home, I feel like I'm gonna have done something. 
this has been a great trip for me. It's instilled confidence. It's rewarded me for the perseverance. The scars that are on the inside are a lot worse than the scars that are on the outside. And that's what is healing to me out here, you know, being out in these mountains with my dogs, doing what I love, that helps me to heal the hardest hurt part. The part that, you know, thinking I wasn't ever going to get to do this again. This is it for me. This is where I'm supposed to be. You know, I wasn't supposed to die that day, but you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. So I'm going to live each day to its fullest. I'm never going to let a day slip by me ever again. I need to rest now. Come on, buddy. We're Team Can't Stop for a reason. We celebrate this blessing we call life every single day. I don't think you ever quit learning. Your survival skills should be building till the end of your days. Didn't get no kings in here, so let's kind of fiddle around the corner here and see if there's anything out a little further today. I'm going all day today and try to catch Sam. Girl's not coming this time, both a little chilled, and that's all right, it's no big deal. Uh, they went and they had fun for the little bit of time they went. Uh, I think we're out here far enough, maybe. What I'm gonna do here is put this in, and then I'll have to get myself in troll mode here. And... Down we go. Now you're just driving. Nice and slow. Watch for a bite. It's so hard to find these winter kings, you know. You can go for days sometimes without catching one. Where we're at, it's a crapshoot. But, uh... Look at the country. Got nice, beautiful snow-capped peaks. We got sun hitting off that big far one at the top. This is gorgeous out. So you just keep your eye on it. There it is. you got 
And if you love what you got, you don't need a whole lot else. Everything have a purpose on this earth. And when you have luck, when you have bounty, when you have food, you should look great. Thank you. 